stop 31 of the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series brings us to Dearborn County and the fairgrounds. Welcome to Lawrenceburg as the best of the business come out here and continue their quest for a championship. The top three are going at it. The fight is on. Every track we visit here with the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series has its own character, its own flavor. But for me, Lawrenceburg Speedway has a lot of special, special things. This is the very first dirt track that I ever visited. I was 12 years old, and yeah, that's a couple of weeks ago. Some might argue that I've never recovered. What great memories. Bert Swafford was on the PA. Ray Scheike was the flag man. So many things stand out in my mind. Now, the place has really changed. The old wooden grandstand is gone now, replaced by this beautiful modern aluminum structure. Even the track has changed. It was a little cool quarter mile back then, now it's a big fast 3.8. I love all the racetracks we go visit, but there's something very special about coming back to the bird. Tell them there's $10,000 on the line, they will come. This is the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series, and you're watching the Rockstar Energy Drink Late Model Nationals. Ken Stout and Rob Clever ready to call all the action for you. Of course, good friend Dave Argerbright, as we've already seen, is at the track, and Kelly Snyder will be helping him out down there on the grounds. We've got a racy place here. As you can see, this place is already starting to blue groove a little bit. It's great to be back here in Lawrenceburg, though. One year ago, we were dodging raindrops. Yeah, absolutely. A very fast racetrack last year. And tonight will be very fast as well, and the stands are packed. The only late model race that this track will see all season long. Here is your Magnaflow exhaust points coming into this event. You can see Bloomquist with a sizable lead, but the battle for second has been steadily getting closer and closer. We'll find out how things lay out here this evening. All right, Lawrenceburg Speedway. Let's talk about it, Rob. Built back in 1950, and as Dave mentioned, it was a quarter mile to start, pretty much a bull ring, almost a complete circle, no real straightaways down, a 3 8 mile, about 15 degrees in the corner, banking, very fast racetrack, multiple grooves of racing as well. Well, Lawrenceburg Speedway is also unique in the fact that these drivers will have the chance to watch two different flagmen tonight. Earlier today, Kelly Snyder followed up on the story. Michael, you have a long history here at this track. How did you get involved in this? I really don't know. Just wanted to do it one day and just start doing it. Made homemade flags and then I just started. I used to be in the pits and then I went to the back stretch and now I'm over here. Are the ladies attracted to your flagging skills? Yeah, a lot of them are. A big tradition and a big part of the Speedway is Michael McMillan right here. No, Rob, you cannot be a flag. <laughs> it's not easy. I mean, those guys make it look easy, but it sure is not. Michael does a good job here each and every week. He's definitely a big part of it. The fans love him as well. So it's great to have him out here. All right, let's show you some highlights from heat racing. Right off the bat, these guys got after it. Dale McDowell, 17M, showing some early muscle here tonight. Four total heat races here tonight, 10 laps in distance, top four. We move on to the A main event. Dale McDowell was your fastest qualifier, picked up his second Red Buck Cigars Fast Time Award in 2010. Some big names inside of this first heat race here, including Ray Cook, also Scott James back in the pile. So the guys scrapping, trying to get up to the front, only 10 laps to get it done. The checkered flag flew. It was Dale McDowell who led him across the stripe. Zach Dom was second, followed by Brandon Kinzer and Jimmy Owens. Here's a look, courtesy of E3. Dale McDowell, you got the night going on a, a good note. Fast qualifier, winning your heat race. Is this the kind of thing you're looking for to keep going? Well, it is definitely. Uh, the racetrack is a little dirty out there right now, so I, I think everybody's having a problem, you know, actually distinguish, distinguishing where to run. So I'm going to go up there and watch some of these heats. Feature's going to be a long 50 laps, so because racetrack's going to be really racy. It's going to have some slick spots in it, but heck, we've got the best start, best start spot in the field, so we're going to try to take advantage of it. Did he just say that dirt track was dirty? That's what he said. Okay. He's right. Just He's just right. Too. <laughs> All right, heat race number two. Again, some big names. Earl Pearson Jr., Dan Schlieper, and this one, Eddie Carrier Jr., Brad Neat, John Blankenship, Mike Marler also in this heat race, and it was quite a battle. Yeah, Tyler Reddick, the young kid from California, kind of checking out on the field, but a three-car battle for second and third. There is Carrier in the 28th. Earl Pearson Jr. going top shelf on Dan Schlieper. 
How about that? Yeah, that is just the opposite of what they typically do. But how about this young kid, Tyler Reddick, leading some of the absolute best of all time? Yeah, coming off turn four, Earl Pearson Jr. would try and make a run at Tyler Reddick, and Reddick would hold him off, pick up his first heat race win this season, and find his seat in tonight's A main. Earl Pearson Jr. would finish second, Dan Schliefer third, and Eddie Carrier Jr. rounded out your top four. Tyler Reddick, your first win this season for the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. What about this track is so fast for you? Well, it just depends on getting that. I mean, you got to have everything right. You got to get your good hot lap. Once you get good in the hot laps, you, you'll set you up for time trials, and that'll set you up in your heat race, and that's what just all fell into place tonight. All right, let's go to heat race number three. More time, 10 laps, top four, trying to get in here. Berkey, the defending race champion inside of this particular heat. Yeah, another star-studded affair. You see Eric Wells chasing Rookie of the Year honors. There is Berkey in the 15, trying to get by Chris Wall, the intimidator out of Holden, Louisiana. It would be trouble, though, for Wall. He would come to a stop, currently leading Rookie of the Year points this year. Justin Ratliff, Wayne Chen inside this one as well. And again, we see race from the top shelf and the bottom shelf. Eisenberg comes across the stripe first. Tim Eisenberg, winner of heat race number three. Now, being a young rookie out here with these guys, it's a big learning curve. Nights like this when you run well, how much does it help your confidence? Oh, it helps your confidence a ton to run good like this. Uh, you know, but uh, we're expecting ourselves to run good sometimes. I mean, I got a lot of help from Jimmy and Chris Mars, and, you know, Jimmy's won a lot of these races. So, uh, you know, we're just getting a chance to show it finally. We were starting to wonder with Tyler Reddick and Tim Eisenberg winning their heat races, if that trend would continue, but Don O'Neill, Scott Bloomquist, Steve Casebolt, Matt Miller, talk about the who's who all in this one. Yeah, you see Casebolt there in the C9, Matt Miller in the seven, working that low part of the racetrack. Shane Clanton almost looping it out there in turn number four, the 08 World 100 winner would lose a couple spots there, but again, a great racetrack here, multi-group. And there's a look at the 71 car and the real deal. Don O'Neill first across the stripe in heat race number four. It was his 12th heat race win of the season, followed by Scott Blumquist, of course, our points leader, then Steve Casebolt and Matt Miller rounded out the top four. Don O'Neill, we're here in your home state. All of the fans out there are yelling for you. Does that put pressure on you, or does it make you feel more at home? No, actually, it's really nice just to be at home, you know. We get to go back and sleep in our own bed tonight. So it's it's really nice and you know to have all the fans out and I, I really enjoy being here. You had a great run in Batesville coming into tonight. Are you looking to take home that win? Well, I don't know about a great run in Batesville. We did to about halfway and then we wound up like 18th or something. So but you know hopefully we can rebound tonight. Well Don O'Neill looking for some more points in the appliancezone.com sponsorship contest and looking for a win here tonight. Well, another guy that's in the hunt for a win is Dale McDowell, and Dave Argerbright is down with him. And Dave, you know, a real solid competitor here out of this particular individual, but he has been searching hard for that first Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series win. Will tonight be the magic? Dale McDowell is in the midst of another strong year here with the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series, but they've kept him out of victory lane. He's been on the podium several times, but needs to get that first win. He's still looking for it. He's in a great starting spot tonight. Dale, you're on the pole. You've talked in recent weeks about your program really coming together. What do you need to do here tonight to close the deal and get in victory lane? Well, obviously, uh, it's a tire gamble a little bit. I think some, back, some guys are back through there on uh, on different tire compounds, and they water to the top of the racetrack. So when they water to the top of the racetrack there, the top groove, I don't know, we, we won't know what it's done, but, you know, to that groove until we get going here. So maybe things will go our way. Uh, you know, we're in a good spot, so I can't complain about the spot, and and uh, maybe we can capitalize on it and then and step front on it. Dale McDowell, indeed, going to be one of the cars to watch. And now let's hear from my colleague in the pit area tonight, Kelly Snyder. The number 11 tee of Tyler Reddick may be a 14-year-old high school freshman, but this student has definitely learned that consistency is the key in this series. Tyler's made several A mains in this series this year and had his first win here tonight. Tyler, you have a great starting position on the inside of row number two. What what are you going to do to hold off these guys that are going to be coming for you up in the front? Well, I'm just going to last till the end of this race. Uh, we're just going to see what we can do. we got hard tires on, so we'll be there at the end, but all it counts is just staying up here and waiting for to be in... Um, be in range for the end of the race, so it just all depends on that. Tyler, you told me earlier you're just looking for a top five finish here tonight, but what would it mean to you to win? It would be huge to win. Um, my family's here, um, my grandparents and um, my great uncle and aunt, and um, you know, it would be great to win here tonight. I got a lot of family here, but I mean, 
Uh, top five would also be huge. Um, the best we've done so far is ninth, but I'm looking we can get five. Tyler Reddick may be the youngest guy out here on this track, but he definitely has a big task ahead of him. Guys? Well, there is no question that young man has the talent to end up in the top five, and he will get his fair share of them and win throughout his career. You're watching the Rockstar Energy Drink Late Model Nationals. When we come back, we'll highlight the B-Mains for you and show you how we filled out the back part of this field. Stay with us.